G'day everyone, Michael Booth and Fiona Wild here. We're just gonna give you a quick insight into the racing conditions for the weekend. Uh, we're here at the ICF World Championships in Balaton, or Balan, Balan Furid, I think it's how, how you say it in uh, Hungarian. It's the second ICF World Championships. Um, I guess I'm re trying to retain a title I, I won back in 2019. Fiona's trying to win her first title and um, we're both really excited to get out there, get amongst it and uh, give our best shot. So tomorrow morning we're starting off with the technical racing heats and then we've got sprint, ra sprint racing in the afternoon. Friday morning is the distance race final um, and then we'll have sprint racing again in the afternoon. Saturday is uh, the amateur racing and a big um, sprinting calendar as well. Technical racing finishing off the weekend on the Sunday. So it's gonna be a massive weekend, especially for the guys doing the three races. I personally will only be doing the technical race and the distance race. Uh, I believe Fiona's doing exactly the same. So Fiona, what are you looking forward to most for this weekend? Yeah, I think it's pretty spectacular. Um, it's, it's special to see how many athletes uh, are here, um, not just Star Wars athletes, but athletes from around the world that are into stand-up paddling at all different levels. Uh, there's a huge junior field that's gonna be here racing. We have uh, masters, elite, open, everybody. So it's gonna be really cool. I think for the men's open distance race, you guys have, will have 150 on the start line um, which is pretty special and for the women we're gonna have about 90 so that's gonna be a massive start for the women's distance race and you know more than that we've all had a very um, turbulent couple years and so to be able to be here in Hungary and see each other again is definitely one of the highlights of all of that so that's it one of the things that I'm looking forward to and not to mention the fact that we just have such a massive starboard team here that's all been working really hard and training um, and excited for this event it's gonna be pretty special I think yeah yeah so from the team I think we've got uh, Connor Baxter which are trying to retain his 200 meter sprint world title mm -hmm. um, we've got uh, obviously Fiona Wild we got Espe Barreras that's the one. <laughs> Sorry, I can't say that last name. We've got Martin Vitri, Leo Nika, Claudio Nika. Um, Katharina Sentna. Yeah. Yeah, Katharina Sentna. Um, we have a couple junior paddlers. We have some athletes from Thailand that came over from Lake Taco. I know they're going to be here. Um, a lot of different regional paddlers. Uh, Germany has quite a big uh, contingency here. Sp Star Wars Spain has a big contingency here as well. So we've got a lot of different riders from all over the place. So it's pretty special and it's really cool for us too to be able to connect with athletes, um, you know, from all over the world, especially these two. Um, here comes Kate and Espe, so they're gonna jump on here and say hello. Hey guys. Hello. Yay. <laughs> yeah. So we've also got Clement Kolmos from New Caledonia and of course uh, Daniel Hasulio from Hungary or Thailand, um, depending on where he wants to be at the time. So, um, Espe, how are you, what are you looking forward to most for the weekend? Yeah. Yeah. And which event are you, are you most focused on? Okay, that's it's awesome. Not going to be easy. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be very strong girls, very strong competition, obviously across all disciplines, so it's going to be awesome to see how you go. Um, Katerina, Hello. how are you? Good, thank you. You're feeling strong? You've been obviously running a lot and you've been doing a lot of different racing across the season? Yeah, so I hope this cross training will be yeah. good now and I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. I think that we compete in all three disciplines and I'm Okay, very good. And what do you think? What do you think is your main event? Which one are you going to focus on the most? Yeah, I've, like I've been training for the long distance. Yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe the sprints are my goals. Okay. Let's yeah. Let's hope to see all three uh, girls on the starboard <laughs> team on the podium on the weekend. And also, we've got Connor Baxter. 
fresh off the water. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I haven't even seen these guys' faces, so <laughs> right on the live feed, straight to it. It's been a crazy opening. So many people arriving from all corners of the earth, so it's been nonstop communicating, catching up, and uh, running around with everybody. The course is set, bumps are on the water, so it's been really fun. Been testing out all the boards, different fins, different paddles, and just getting comfortable. We've been here for over a week now, so it's been uh, good to get comfortable and get a lay of the water, the lake. I'll be uh, just doing two divisions, just like in China two years ago. I'll be doing the sprint and tech, leave the distance to the other guys. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it should be fun. There's, like I said, some bump on the water, so hoping more of that comes. That's definitely our strong suit in Hawaii. So I take advantage as much as I can and uh, see what happens. And what, um, what event are you looking forward to most? The, the sprint or the technical or a bit of both? A bit of both. I think I'm most excited for the technical just because of the turn, the excitement of it. Uh, feeling the pressure, obviously, for the 200 meter um, winning it in China. So I'm definitely going to be defending that going all out. And it's been cool because the training has been really consistent in the sense we got a 1,000 meter sprint with some turns and a 200 meter sprint. So it's been really exciting and fun to train for that and really kind of just put my focus into one side of the sport. And the conditions have been quite interesting. Uh, I think we've probably got a little bit more, I guess, bump than we probably would have expected. Like I, I thought it would be dead flat, but there is wind coming in at different times throughout the day. So I think that's going to be quite a challenge for the competitors. How do you think that's going to mix up the competition? Being here for a week already, yeah, we've had a mix of conditions. Uh, some days completely flat, what you would expect the lake to have, sailboats barely moving, and then the next few days paddling with Fiona, some of the warm-up days, full-on downwind swell, and uh, made me interested if they did the distance raise point A to point B to sign up for that, just because there's so much bump and swell in the, the ocean or lake. So that's really interesting, but if that pans out well, and these kind of little chops and the wind stays, I'm really excited for the technical just because you got swell coming from outside of the lake kind of in towards the course and then bouncing off the wall here on the inside where all the spectators are going to be watching so you got bumps coming in bumps going out um, it's really going to change the positioning up there's so many turns and such short little bursts it's not going to be this typical jump into a train and kind of stay in those positions as you are definitely going to see positions change left and right first to last and last to first so um, in that case, let's pray for some swell, pray for some bump, and see what happens. Yeah. All right. Well, I think uh, Connor said it best. I think there's going to be a lot of uh, challenging conditions out there this weekend. Um, I guess for me, I am obviously just focusing really on the distance race. I'd like to try and retain my title, similar to what Connor's trying to do in the 200, and uh, we'll see what happens. It's going to be really cha challenging conditions, I think, more than we really realise. Because there is sort of like that 6 to 11 knot wind that is kind of predicted for the distance race. So there will be a lot of side on chop the whole way through. It will be wash riding, but I think there will be opportunities to make different moves at different stages. And you just have to be ready to do those things. I will be doing the technical as well. And I'll really be seeing how I go in that one. Obviously, as Connor said, it is a bit of a sprint. It's only basically 200 meters to that first can. And it's going to be very hard to, to pass after that. So you're going to be wanting to be uh, first to that, that can as we go through. So... Um, I think, Fiona, you've been here the longest. <laughs> tell, us, tell us a little bit about that. So you came in two weeks before the event. You came straight from Prague after a win there. Yeah. Um, what was the thinking behind that? And do you, have you really appreciated being here for that longer period of time? Yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, you know, a lot, well, all of us as racers and athletes, it's always go, go, go from one event to another or one training camp to another one. And uh, I wanted to take this opportunity after a very busy spring and summer of racing and training across a bunch of different sports to really focus in on training and get familiar with the area, which has been really cool. So I came here, um, I've already been here in Balaton Fjord for 10 days now, and it's been spectacular. Every single day it's been slightly different. I've been able to see in terms of conditions anyways. Um, I've been able to see some repetitive patterns come through, but it's also been fascinating. You know, if there's a little bit of a storm system coming through, it gets really windy here on the lake. Um, so I've just been trying to paddle in all those different conditions, different times of the day, because um, since I'll be doing the technical as well as the long distance, we'll be paddling at different times. And yeah, it's been spectacular, you know, getting into a rhythm, um, getting 
extremely familiar with our new boards and just uh, you know getting as ready as we can and, and most of all having fun and enjoying the process of getting the opportunity to come and race at a world championships. You know we're all coming from different backgrounds. Um, everybody, everybody at this event um, is here with different levels and it's pretty special to be able to come and see the excitement with all of that and for me personally I just wanted to come here early, train and, and be as prepared as I can be and I think I've done a pretty good job and now that all that's you know behind us um, I get to enjoy it with everybody and we just get to have fun and go out and really just paddle our best. That's all it's about, you know, go out there, everybody knows how to paddle, everybody's done their preparation, have fun, enjoy it and you know share this special event with 400 of our paddle friends <laughs> yeah so i guess off that two questions what do you think of the conditions morning versus afternoon and secondly which boards will you be using um for the racing whether you're using the sprint or the all-star yeah super good questions so i've noticed that when there isn't a squall system coming through um you know or much of a low pressure actually the morning typically tends to be a little bit breezier um, with a bit of a thermal pull from the lake onto the land because the lake water is actually a little bit warmer than the land in the early mornings. So that means that you have a little bit of breeze happening, um, like Michael said, around 6 to 11 knots, somewhere in that range. And it's typically been out of the southwest, so, or sorry, southeast. So that's going to um, make it that pretty much whatever angle we're on for the distance race has a little bit of cross chop in it. But really, it's not going to be that much, so I'll be still looking to use a sprint for the distance race. And then for the technical, um, you know, a lot of the technical heats are going to be in the afternoon, which means that that breeze backs off a little bit and it gets a little bit uh, on the glassier side of the spectrum. But at the same time, when you put eight competitors paddling very fast, very similar speeds on the water, it's not going to be flat. So I'll most likely be using the all-star for the technical races. Yeah, awesome. And Espe, what has been your preparation leading into the championships? Um, I, I didn't see you in Prague and I didn't see you in Denmark. Obviously, I... Oh, sorry, I did see you in Prague. <laughs> you did finish second in Prague. My mistake. Um, you know, you just get rattling on a chain. But so get me to talk, talk us through. You had obviously you race in Prague. You had a week off. You are prepared, prepared to come here. You've flown in. How's the body feeling? Yeah, be all rounded. Yeah, and you've got, and you've obviously got a lot of athletes you've brought here, a lot of starboard team riders from Spain. Is there anybody stand out that you think is going to do well over the weekend? Yeah, well, that's awesome. Well, thanks. And uh, Katarina, tell us a little bit about the Italian team. Um, who is who is joining you? Um, I guess from the starboard Italian team, and, and how are they looking for the event? Yeah, we have a pretty big team actually. And from, uh, there is uh, Leonie, Frank, Carlo, Nica as well. I think Claudio is going to compete in the sprints in the technical. It's, I think last um, 2019, Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be good to see so many countries competing. Does anyone know how many countries are competing? We have nine. 
yeah. Last time I think it was like 37 or something yeah, like that. Yeah, but... probably similar and then every team has gotten a little bigger, a little yeah. bigger. And the amateur side, it seems like master division, junior division, way more people obviously being easier access. Everyone's driving from Austria, up from this place, hop in the car and you got a five hour to 10 hour drive. Yeah. So and everyone's w- taking advantage of that opportunity. And what has the vibe been like? Because I know for me personally, I've felt like there's been a lot of bit of fanfare for the athletes a little bit more which has been kind of cool so for someone like yourself with the high stature in the sport what's that been like just on tuesday even we're not even close to the event rolling into the hotel no expectations just gonna go grab my board for a quick little half an hour paddle and it took me two hours just to get through the hotel so that has been amazing you know i've been out of the scene for now almost a year and a half two years so to see the excitement that the people still have for the top athletes, still remembering who won where and what we did and all these past victories and results where I sometimes forget. They're like still so clear in their memory. So it's been really cool taking photos with everybody, um, signing stuff, doing all that. I mean, it's been a time away from it. So now to be back into it in such a high level, like you said, we got 300, 400 paddlers here, all so excited to do it. And, um, you know, they're all really excited to see all of us after a big long time as well as you. You know, we've been out of the scene, not seeing everybody on the Euro Tour as Fiona snuck over here for a few of the beginning <laughs> events. So this is our first time really seeing other athletes, seeing you guys, seeing um, all the amateur, master, junior paddlers, and the vibe is high. Everyone is super excited. Everyone's ready to get out there and paddle out uh, their hard so it's going to be really fun. Yeah, yeah, I think, um... I think I've noticed that myself a lot, um, being an athlete who's been out of the sport. Well, not purposely out of the sport, but I think because of the pandemic or the pandemic winter, as I keep calling it. Um, it, It's been obviously challenging to not be here, but to come back and be able to race well and to see so many stoke paddlers. I was lucky to do clinics around the different places, but just to walk through the the hotel, like Connor said, or go through the board storage or just walking around in general, you're getting stopped for photos. And I think that's really cool. And it shows, I think what the sport is becoming. I think it's been around for, I guess, 12, 13 years as a a certain form. And and now it's sort of evolving again, which is great to see. And and everyone's really willing to learn, wants to get uh, more information, wants to talk to you more. And and it's really fantastic. And hopefully um, all the guys and girls from the starboard team can put on a fantastic show. So is there anything anybody else wants to add before we jump off? I want to ask you a question. Okay. Keep the camera at you. Okay, okay. Yeah. Now, for the distance race, I guess, what would be a big, your biggest tip for all the listeners out there for, you know, over two days away? What's a big preparation <laughs> tip or something to give them? Yeah, so I think for the distance race, it's really important to just get off the line well, but also pick where you're going to be starting from. If you're a really fast starter, you can start anywhere, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> uh, but if you're a little bit slower, you don't want really to get caught in the pack, so think about where you're going to position yourself on the line. Um, and then really pace yourself, like it's going to be hot out here, you're probably going to have a little bit of wind, so make sure that you've got the, like, the right nutrition, you eat well before the event, and you're really focusing down on just doing your best performance. It's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be challenging, there's going to be a lot of um, movement in the water because we are going to have 150 paddles on the water, plus there's going to be a bit of wind. There's definitely going to be boat wake, I think, from what I understand, because <laughs> The people who are driving the boats are actually the local police in the area, so <laughs> they won't be as probably polite to the paddlers as I would probably otherwise expect. So that's going to be an additional element. And oh, I'm just for me, I'm just really excited to get back on the start line at a big event like this. I've said it the last couple of weekends, like having 20 months off international racing is not the easiest thing, but it's just nice to be able to be back. And I just feel so lucky and so fortunate to be back out in the water. So I'm, I'm excited just to have a battle with some people that I haven't had battles with for a long time. And whenever I finish up, I'll, I'll just be happy that I'm on the start line. So, yeah, Very cool. Excited. Well, let's all get in here for... A little fam- sign out. Yeah, we just... Um, <laughs> thank you, guys. It's amazing to be part of the Starboard family. And, um, yeah, definitely cheer us all on. We'll be racing a whole bunch to seeing you all soon. So thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Team Starboard. He wants to show you this TV.